Web hostings come with a monthly or yearly premium and are good for business purposes. But if you want to host a personal static website with a few daily visitors, then you don't need to purchase any web hosting. You can use Google Firebase, which provides hosting for free. Google Firebase is a mobile app development platform. It offers a Spark plan, which includes free web hosting for lifetime at no cost. However, it has some limitations. You can only store 10 GB of data, and it has a data transfer limit of 360 MB per day. It means if your web page size is let's say 1 MB, then it will allow 360 visits per day. This is enough for a personal website with little to no user base. This is also useful for beginner developers who want to present their projects for all to see. The best part is you can add your custom domain with a SSL certificate free of cost. So let's see how you can host a static website with a custom domain and SSL on Google Firebase. First of all, visit firebase.google.com, then sign in with your email account. To create a new project, go to console. Click on create a project. Enter your project name. Once the project is created, you are ready to host your website with Firebase Hosting. I already have a static website on my computer. To deploy this site on the Firebase Hosting, we need to use the Firebase command line tool, also known as Firebase CLI. Before you can install the Firebase CLI, you need to install Node.js on your computer. Visit nodejs.org and download the Node.js installer for your computer. Then install it on your computer. Once you have installed Node.js, you can now install Firebase CLI using the Node Package Manager. For that, we just need to run a simple command. To do so, open command prompt. Run this command to install the Firebase CLI on your device. After successful installation, go to your project folder. After that, run this command to log into your Firebase account. Once you have successfully logged in, it will show you this message in your browser. Now, to initiate a Firebase project, you have to enter this command. Here, we have to select the hosting feature since we are using it only for hosting purposes. Then press the spacebar to select it and press enter to go to the next step. Then it will ask you to select your Firebase project. Select the project which you created earlier. Then it will ask you to enter the main folder in which all your website assets are present. In my case, it's the public folder. Now it asks whether the site is a single page or not. I'll enter Y. We don't need to use the GitHub development, so enter N. It will try to override your index.html file. To avoid doing that, enter N. Finally, for the deployment of your project, you have to run this command. Now your website should be live. It provides the website URL here. 
you can check by opening this URL in your browser. Once your website is public, you can replace this domain with your custom domain. To do that, go to your project in the Firebase console. On the side menu, click the Build tab. Then click on Hosting. Click on Add Custom Domain. Then enter your domain name. First, you need to verify your domain ownership. To do that, add this txt record to your domain provider's DNS. I purchased this domain from Google Domains. Let's quickly update the txt record there. Next, to connect the domain to the Firebase hosting, you need to add this A record to your domain's DNS record. You can also set the redirection of www to the naked domain by creating a CNAME record. Now, wait a bit depending on your domain provider to update these DNS records. In my case, I am able to access the site within a few minutes, but the SSL certificate has not been installed yet. Firebase will automatically add an SSL certificate to the domain. I have to just wait a few hours until I get the HTTPS batch added to this domain. As you can see, it's still showing need setup message. Once the SSL is added, you will see the connected status here. So guys, that's how easy it is to host a static website with a custom domain for free. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful. Please let me know what you think in the comments below.